This is the I Read Comic Books podcast. I'm Tia, your host for this special edition mini-sode. We asked our amazing listeners to make donations in support of the protest calling for racial justice and a huge thanks to Kelly Gruber for unlocking this interview with Ted Brand and Rose Stein, artists on the hit Eisner Award-nominated crowded from image comics welcome to the show hi, hi thank you for having us hello it's like oh someone paid money to unlock our episode it's like oh i really hope it's a good one <laughs> 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 well you know i mean this is your second eisner nomination so you guys are like a pretty big deal now still don't feel like it yeah i mean <laughs> with, with the many question marks that tone of voice implies so You've been in comics now for a handful of years, and I, I guess I, I've never even asked you how you got into comics. Sheer fluke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that quite literally. Because um, we both went to university to, to study, study comics. How to make comics, yeah. Yeah. Um, which was, you know, is a, a lot of fun. Um, but it... Not well, necessarily prepares you for no, the industry. No, while we were there, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happened afterwards, but while we were there, there wasn't a lot of vocational focus. So it, things right. didn't really come together afterwards. We both tried and failed at um, doing some stuff. But then um, just out of the blue, um, I saw um, one day on Tumblr that Jeremy Whitley was looking for um, artists for volume three of Princeless because... Um, it had fallen the, through, yeah, the, type thing. Right. Yeah, the, current art, the current artists that they'd had on it uh, had had some personal issues that meant they were unable to fulfill, to fulfill, and it was just, and I mean, it was one of those things of we both knew instinctively that because it was, you know, an established big deal that relatively that um, princess that um, neither one of us was up to doing it ourselves. Well, it's also the fact that we've never done anything like that by ourselves. No, exactly. And with the time pressures and everything, it was like, there is no way. No. So ah. that, that was what started us working, actually working together. I was going to ask, how did you decide that? So for those who don't know, um, at least on Crowded, and, and it sounds like on, on all of your work in comics so far, Ro is the penciler and uh, Ted, you're the inker, right? Yeah. And then we um, we generally work, work out the pages yeah, together. Work out layouts together. Mm. Oh, okay. And then um, on Printless, then Ro was also doing the coloring and I was doing the lettering. And we, we went back to that for um, the recent um, comic, short comic we did with Jamie McKelvey, um, Dreams, in the. Um, Aftershock SOS anthology. So um, you both at university trained as artists top to bottom. What made you decide, to, like, how did you split the the duties up between you? Did one of you just like prefer inking over penciling or I don't know I'm just because you guys it's a, it's so neat to me that you are this unit and you work together and and your art is so cool. It's like you really have this kind of simpatico so how did you how did you like divvy up the what what's what it's kind of a natural inclinations to certain parts in a way yeah because i'm incredibly messy yeah and, <laughs> and i am less visually creative uh, that's you know i'm i don't i think i've long suspected it's a function of the of my autism that i'm not very good at generating things but i'm very good at fixing them interesting so i really like making art but i i can't pencil good body language to save my life right i but can't you can fix the length of arms yeah exactly <laughs> i you know i i've never been able to convey convincing body language or facial expressions if if i'm not directly copying or tracing an image so i was i was never going to be a good fit for penciling I feel like I can really relate to that because that's why I became an art historian. I loved art enough to know that I was bad at it, <laughs> but I'm good at reverse engineering it. Uh, Ro, I think I might have accidentally cut you off. 
if you did, I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's totally fine. Uh, so I'm I'm really bummed that the Eisners this year are going to be remote because you know it's so much fun and we have to get you both out to San Diego so that you can kind of bask in the nomination and and go to the lovely four hour ceremony um and get dressed up maybe uh for oh, volume three shorts, you, mean. <laughs> you don't own any cargo shorts that's a common thing, <laughs> the standard male attire for the Eisners hey Chris yes. wore a tie oh, no. <laughs> It is. It's true. But Chris wore a tie. He classed up the place last year. For listeners who maybe don't know, Chris Sabella is the writer of Crowded. And the editor, uh, Juliet Capra, she was pretty, she was just pretty snazzy too. So I feel like the team has set the standard very high. You're going to have to find some really, really formal cargo shorts. (laughs) Oh God, that's gonna be hard. <laughs> that's right. I can uh, I can just get some uh, tuxedo trousers, cut them off at the knee, and then use the the, uh, <laughs> the remaining material to make pockets. You're a monster. <laughs> I'm I'm so sad that conventions are cancelled this year. And we actually met at the last convention that I went to before all of the world shut down. Yes. Yeah, uh, thought bubble was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's sad that it's not on this year. But it's the responsible thing to do, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. But, yeah, you know, that just was I, my first time at Thought Bubble, and it was it was the best show. I can't wait to go back. Do you um, do you go to a lot of shows? Was, no. Was... <laughs> no. No, I mean, there's a variety of factors. Like, some of it is we're poor both in money and time. Because Crowded is a very intensive book that, you know, because it's creator owned doesn't pay very well. So, right. so yeah, and we're not we're not big enough names that we could get many conventions to actually pay for us to go. Well, maybe two Eisner nominations later. Well, maybe we we'll could dream. Yeah. <laughs> All right, listeners start rattling the sabers because you definitely (laughs) want Ted and Roe to come to conventions when it's safe to do so again. They are tons of fun and they're really cool and you could buy their awesome books. So just putting that out there. Yes. If you've got a local convention in the States, do, do plug us as uh, international guests. If If they pay for us to come, we would be delighted to. That would be fun. We need to get you back out here. (laughs) So you mentioned that you, met at university where you were studying comics yes what made you decide to study comics do you go way back as a kid being into comics or like how what was your introduction to it as a medium well for me I wanted to be an animator so I did my first year of university studying animation and I hated it with a passion (laughs) because I do not have the patience to do um the intensive work that entails, but I enjoyed the storyboarding. So it was kind of another fluke that I saw that there was a it um, a course for doing comics, which is taking some of the best stuff I like from the animation course and putting it to work in without having to do an actual animation degree. <laughs> right. <laughs> and for me, it was just, um, I was... I, I mean, I I was reading comics when I was just about able to read, so I probably started reading them about three. Wow, I would say prodigy, reading prodigy. Well, I mean, you know, the comics I was reading then were the B, no, yeah, be, they were fairly they were, they had been fairly unsophisticated, but certainly by the time I was four, I was reading Asterix and Tintin and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff, and. <laughs> They like shaped your brain as it developed. Oh yeah, um, and yeah, it, it, and they all—they always made. I, I love reading prose as well, but comics always made more sense. You know what? I I really relate to that. The visual storytelling is so unique, as as, as you mentioned, Ro, even from animation, which is kind of a cousin of comic books, but. 
what I really I think yeah what makes sense about comic books is is that there's an element that you have to like bring to it to read the the passing of time yeah absolutely it's 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 more definitely more participatory for yeah. reading than, than animation would be for a viewer and yeah i don't know um there's something about the synthesis of word and image that is it's just magic it really is i totally agree do either of you do any writing as well as art i do not no um i mean i i, I said uh, on the art side that i'm i'm good at fixing rather than generating and the same is true for writing as well i'm hoping to change that cuz um there was an interesting kickstarter i backed this year um called the story engine which is a um like a, 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 a set of cards that you can like arrange to make skeleton stories. Right. Yeah. So, which, cause like, I'm, I've got lots of ideas for stories, but then I'm not very good at turning them into a plot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can't turn them into a compelling actual plot. So hopefully when, when that Kickstarter reward, uh, reward arrives, then yeah, cause we, I mean, we've got stories that we've come up with that we'd like yeah. to, uh, that we'd like to turn into something for ourselves it is not necessarily written yet <laughs> no exactly. yeah we, we've got me- we've got plenty of ideas of things that would be fun and definitely fit our brand of high octane silly yeah but <laughs> yeah you know i think people don't realize that writing takes the same practice as as art just because you know how to type words doesn't mean you know how to be a writer oh, and no. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, there's things I I can I can write a script that works. It's the but but making a story that that yeah underpins the whole thing is yeah yeah. I've never I've never yet found. I read quite a few books on writing. I've never yet found a method that works for me. So who knows? Well, keep looking because I feel like you have such a strong visual storytelling aesthetic um, and you add so many cool visual elements to the story in Crowded. So I think that like the world needs your stories. Like, I hope, I hope you find something that works. Well, great. Yeah, us too. (laughs) So I mean, the, 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 the ultimate dream is that we could just make a book just between the two of us. Yeah. And for for readers who are sorry for listeners who haven't read Crowded, first of all, why? Second of all, um, get on that. And third, it is a story that is about. Um, I think Chris likes to use the phrase ten minutes into the future," uh, where a young woman is, discovers that this crowdfunded assassination app has this very large campaign against her so she uh uses this other app to hire a bodyguard and all manner of shenanigans ensue Uh, if i have caught all the way up which i i'm pretty sure i have they're currently hanging out with like some weird cult in las vegas um nearby Um, okay yeah oh god i've forgotten yeah no, um, it's the one over is New Mexico. Yes, uh, yeah, just on the edge of New Mexico. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. To tell you the truth, the, the United States is very large, and that is definitely the no man's land. Yeah. Arizona. <laughs> oh, God, nothing good happens in Arizona. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That, that's like, that's literally kind of nothing it. good. That's, that's very much actively stated. <laughs> Listeners, if you're from Arizona, um, stay safe out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the second trade I think is coming out June twenty fourth. Yes. Yes, next week. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, which when this episode airs might be in the past. Uh, so everyone can run out and get it. And um, do you have a sense for how many volumes Crowded will rent to? Oh, One more. Th- yeah, three volumes. Okay, that's a good amount. That's you know. Yeah. I mean. It's just, it's also the fact that Crowded is so work intensive. 
Well, I mean, you guys leave no stone unturned in your yeah. in your artwork. It's really detailed. And and I said earlier, like, you know, the visuals uh, make it so much richer to read the book. And you guys have such a good sense of humor. It, it's a really fun book. And I, I can only imagine how labor intensive it is. How long does it take on average to finish a page? Oh, that's a difficult question, really. Yeah, I mean, we've gone anywhere. F- like, I mean, from my point of view, I've gone anywhere from, I think, four hours to three days. So, th- so four hours th- that's to them maybe like sixteen hours, Poss- possibly slightly more. I think people don't realize how labor intensive the artwork is for comics. No, nah. <laughs> I mean, for crowded, a lot of the um, a lot of the time is also front loaded. It's working out not just the layouts, but then like specifics of the sets. Yeah, the sets. Yeah, and, and making sure that that recurring characters are go. Uh, you know, recurring background characters are in the right places, and because we we've probably gone overboard in how much we think about it. Honestly. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely do you, have. <laughs> do you have, do you keep like a mood board or like what kind of inspiration in the in the world do you draw from when you're putting together these sets and characters? A, um, a lot of Google Earth yeah, actually I mean, it's, is helpful. It's, it's 90% <laughs> real life because yeah, yeah. That, that's what we wanted to go for anyway. The idea that it, you know, it's supposed to feel like it could happen. Maybe not next week, but next year. Like, I mean, at this rate, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, it, that was always the uh, it was always the goal to make it mostly real. So, l- l- there's a lot of stuff like that. But um, every now and then, we just like a, a lot of the a lot of the world building stuff in terms of like brands and corporations that are out there that's usually just the dumbest pun we can think of at the, in the moment Love yeah we it. have occasionally while on dog walks just gone around thinking of different um joke names and yeah companies we can put in yeah we, we've got a um an, we've got an uh, a, an open note in my apple note <laughs> app that's just got pun names for us to put in if uh, if it comes up if we need more tv shows yeah like we made up oh yeah america's next top bottom i think is is one of the m- most of that one. <laughs> shared yeah panels i see on social media it's a good one yeah that, that was a work of a- <laughs> that, that, that was your your best one i think my my best one was probably crispy kremlin yeah i don't know if i get that one it's because it, well, it was just a, it was a, it was a knock about the um, Russian interference in uh, American politics because yes. Donut and Krispy Kreme are such an American icon, so oh, I made it okay. Krispy Kremlin, um, and the symbol is like a donut and sickle <laughs> with their with their brand campaign of eat like a czar. Oh my god! See, this is the visuals are so important as a visual pun, like that's amazing what do you say it out you know so sometimes this the story texture is in the visuals yeah and we've tried to make we tried to make it as fun and weird as we can with the like the brands and all of that to give a sense of a world that's quite like this one only not another thing i really appreciate about the work that you do in this book is the uh body diversity the diversity of characters like you know the each character has a pretty distinct personality and uh it, it i mean i know you said that you feel like you maybe put a little too much work into it but it really does come come off the page all the work that you put in thank you um well the, the drawing the different types of people that's not so much the overthinking part that bit is just fun and I, if you're going to drive one the same, that's just really boring. Because if you've got a police that's got four, like almost a crowd of 400 people, drawing the same person again and again and again, you will go insane. Right. So. Yeah, yeah no, the overthinking is much more in the designing of um, and also like scenery and. And um, the. Uh, it's not the, I'm, the, I'm having trouble thinking of the word, not particulars, uh, schematics, something along that. 
of a certain movement. Yeah. Yeah, trying to think about the the arc of a movement and right all of that choreography like in, in a way. Yeah. yeah, like the like in see in um, episode episode issue seven when trying to track the luggage going around the tube. I didn't actually need to do that accurately, but I did, and it was <laughs> but yeah, no, like as far as people go, that's just the fun bit. Yeah, <clears throat> and the dog. Oh my god, the dog. The weird mutant dog. (laughs) (laughs) As someone who um, is really dedicated to Cornish Rex cats, like I love weird looking creatures. So I appreciate mutant dog. (laughs) I mean, I think from the introduction, dog is the one who's probably changed the most out of the three main characters. (laughs) <laughs> but in terms of um, visuals, but I think we've we've landed on a a place where he at least looks consistent. Yeah, he was right. meant to be a chihuahua, but I did not know how to draw a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of is. You just have to channel their tiny little anger. I've never met a chihuahua that wasn't very angry. They're very death before dishonor. <laughs> yeah. So you're both delightful on Twitter. And one of the things that I've loved uh, following on during this period of quarantine is your adventures in baking. (laughs) That has been fun. Were you uh, baking inclined before all of this? Sort of, but not really very often. No. Um, And it has declined a bit because I've been trying to... Because our diet was getting a bit unhealthy, it, <laughs> a bit unhealthily bread focused, carb heavy. Yeah, because I shouldn't really eat carbs anyway in that form because of a condition I've got. So, but it's just so tasty. Oh, yeah. they, they look so good. They do so, look so good. So yeah, I mean, tr- I'm trying to you know bake at weekends now and leave weekdays for uh, more sensible foods. Because, but I, it was. I did get a bit carried away with bread. I've I've never really made loaves of bread before. Certainly, never made like um, bread buns. So it's, mm-hmm. it had been a fun, fun adventure. Did you put up a photo of the giant cake I made? <gasps> no, no. Um, I would remember I, I that. You would if you were going to. You know I'm terrible at Twitter. I I, I, re- <laughs> I rarely remember it's there. It was a very very tall cake. It, I think it was meant to be for like twelve people. Yeah, oh my gosh. more. It was for you for Ted's mom's birthday, so it was a giant carrot cake, and it, That's the it best was the best kind. It, it was so big. Yeah, because it, it it was also helped by the fact that um we didn't have a tin that was the right width, so we had it was a narrower tin than it was supposed to be by an inch. So it okay, which is quite a substantial amount of surface area that it that it was losing by that inch. Yeah, so that meant it got. A lot taller in bed. <laughs> it was almost as tall as my hand. Yeah, uh, uh, lengthways rather than widthways. I should point out. Yeah, so from like wrist fingers. <laughs> so I mean, was that just one layer? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> um, carrot cake is is basically my favorite. It's it's really good. Yeah. 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 It is. Do you do it with any sort of like pecans or pineapple? Like you can get crazy with it. You can. I just I you don't take don't really like that much different textures in cake, do you? I don't. I don't really like differing textures in any solid amount of food. It's one of those weird autism things that right it gets it creeps me out. Like the same way, I I really love brownies, but don't like walnuts in them like most people do. I think you're correct on that one. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you that one. I agree. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like a weird sensory thing, and you're like, I'm yeah. having a sensory experience, and then this other one just sort of like pops on in, and I'm like, yeah. where do you come from? That's really wrong with a gooey brownie as well. Yeah, like, what, where's this nut so, come from? But, but yeah, there wasn't anything extra inside the carrot cake. The uh, the terrifying amount of cream Crunchy cheese frosting. frosting was... Yeah, that was good. Yeah. I mean, death by cream cheese frosting, what a way to go. I got the best compliment from you ever in that 
it, you liked my carrot cake as much as any chocolate cake you'd had. Yeah. Which, if you, if you know Ted, that's quite quite a good thing. <laughs> I don't really like cake outside of chocolate cake, generally. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Just don't. You, you like chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate <laughs> is pretty amazing. I, I like chocolate a lot, but in cake form, I love it. And I can't explain that. You know, I'm... Mouth hug. Hmm. <laughs> so do, so is there like a sort of distinction that rose the sort of cake baker and ted is the bread maker yeah i mean generally our, our, our skills in the kitchen divide along the savory sweet line yeah I, i'm i'm the pudding <laughs> pudding person <laughs> yes i can't cook anything useful but i can bake cakes and They're useful. yeah well not for not getting scurvy or whatever. I guess maybe oh, if you made really lemon cake. But, but from, <laughs> lemon cake. Yeah. And lemon from, cake, yeah. From a cheeriness point of view, man cannot live on savory alone. You know, I'm just going to throw something out there. Non-fiction baking how-to comics. That would be fun. And we did like- do a video of us doing a cake at one point that's on our... Yeah, Coffee. but that was that was a horrifying cake. <laughs> it was for a um, it was for a, a um, inappropriate cake baking contest. See who could make the most inappropriate cake. <gasps> Did you make a penis cake? No, no we made a worse one. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it uh, was shameful. Yeah, I mean, it was great, and we <laughs> won the contest. But I'm so it was proud. Shameful. I'm so proud. Yeah, it was a big old mess. <laughs> but so was, tasty. And that worked in its favour, though. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was... Oh, there, yeah, there is a five-minute video on our um, on our coffee um, f- for anyone who donates to that uh, of us making the terribly inappropriate cake of which we will not d- describe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so th- that seems like a good moment to let people know where they can find you on the internet. I am on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you can get in contact with me there uh, at Rostein404. And I'm at 10TEN underscore bandits. We're also both on Instagram with those, but also sporadically. <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible at Instagram. Yeah, it's hard. It's I really difficult. It. Like, things like Instagram um, are difficult because it's that thing of process stuff is great, but then when you're this far into a book, there's so little you can share spoilers. that isn't spoilers. That's true, yeah. And then also you have a website, uh, brantonstein.com. We do. Where... Equally languishing. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Well, you, there's a link to your uh, coffee and there's links yes. to all where people can get crowded and your past projects and every they can find all of your work. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Ooh, Ooh, thank fantastic. you very much. Sure. And, uh, you know, I just want to say again, thank you both so much for taking the time. I absolutely love Crowded. I'm so happy for you to get your second Eisner nomination and uh, it's just I miss you guys I hope we will see each other again at a convention yes that would be so good when they, yeah. <laughs> when they finally become legal again then and yes. sensible then yes yes until then socially distanced high fives yeah I think that's a Y5 yeah <laughs> I know we're doing great with the social distance part <laughs> cool well thank you both so much have a wonderful rest of your evening thank you again to kelly for unlocking this episode and stay safe out there kids uh keep fighting the good fight and that is a wrap mm-hmm.